Hi guys, Alex here. Welcome back to Shook Unscripted. And today we're going to be talking about Chantal's new community tab post where she says she is making several changes. There's a lot to talk about. We're also going to touch upon her response to Salah's business. She doesn't want to talk about it. Her lips are sealed. We will also talk about Shabib's attempt at a live stream today. Is he confirming the $9,000 gift? <laughs> And then later on in the video, we will discuss Amber Lynn's return to YouTube. I was going to do a reaction video, but I decided to scrap that and just kind of talk about it and we'll get there. Also, I've gotten a couple comments saying that maybe it's time to get rid of the snowmen. Let me know in the comments down below. I feel like it might be still like a little bit early, but if everyone wants the snowman gone, then we'll like get rid of the snowmen. Let me know. All that and more coming up on today's video. Let's just get right into it. I mean, shall we? All right, you guys. So I thought we could go ahead and start off the video by candidly talking about Foodie's new community tab post from yesterday as well as what happened towards the end of the live stream the breakfast live stream from yesterday which was the last time that she has been seen on yt basically yesterday if you didn't see yesterday's video i'd recommend viewing that first but she did address Salah's business situation and she just didn't really want to talk about it. She got very upset at all of the comments because of this video from Bubble Tea. It's been going kind of around the community and it has sparked up that discussion in regards to Salah's business and people just don't think that what he's doing is legit because there are so many red flags. Now, she actually provided an out for Salah by saying that he does not provide international shipping. So for us in the US and Canada and even Europe, he is not going to be able to fulfill any orders. So I know that people were interested in maybe placing an order and seeing what came, if anything, just to kind of take one for the team. I know I would probably be interested in doing that as well, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen because he's not shipping outside of Kuwait or allegedly even inside Kuwait. Allegedly. So after that live stream, I mean, people have questions for Foodie and she is unable to answer them and she's just tired of people asking her questions, I guess. So she put up this community tab. Let's discuss it. This is one of those novels. I love these community tabs. Hi. So I am going to be saying quite a bit here. I really don't feel like going live. I have too much going on and I am just done with addressing anything that could potentially fuel this anymore. Any attention. That includes any legal actions or reporting with YouTube I have done. So we know that she is probably alluding to FFG here in regards to the legal actions. She does state her name later on in the community tab post, um, possibly Natter as well. But the truth is, I don't see her doing any sort of legal actions for several reasons. I can't see this being a criminal offense. Maybe in Natter's case, she would be able to argue that. But if she was going up against FFG, the only chance that she would have is with a civil case if she hired her own lawyer or something like that and maybe copyright or something. If she went along those lines, not saying that she would win or that this lawsuit would have any merit, but I'm just thinking along her lines, right? Girl, you don't want to do that. Every single little piece of drama or response or self-defense I communicate with the public online only gives people like FFG more fodder to continue their crap and I will not do it. I like that word fodder, but to be perfectly honest, this community tab is exactly that. Fodder for drama channels to talk about. And here we are. I never have. I have never once instigated hate against this person. I would actually beg to differ. She always wants to say that when she comes on and claps back, it is in response to FFG. And I to be fair, a lot of the time it is, but she cannot say that she has not instigated hate against her. I mean, telling people that she unalived her dogs and things like that, is that not hate? It seems pretty hateful to me. I think that Chantal is has been pretty upset these past couple of days because the criticism has been at an all-time high in regards to this cat arc. It is still going on. She, I believe, still has BBJ and her fate is in limbo. Many people have came forward and said that they wanted to take BBJ. I know that FFG in particular, she's 
Chantal's not going to give FFG the cat, but she said that she would take care of the cat. There are some other people, I guess, getting in contact with her about that cat. If you live in Canada and want to foster a cat for the last couple of years of their life, then I guess get in contact with Chantal. I mean, the whole situation is just messed up. Ditching a cat at 18 years, you put 18 years in. Like, this isn't a human where you put 18 years in and then they go off on their own, right? <laughs> is that Was that her thought process? It's not the same as a human putting in 18 years. BBJ is not ready to fly the coop and start making her own money and supporting herself. Like that, it doesn't work like that. All right, guys, editing Alex here. I am cutting out a little bit of the community tab section. It just drug on for a little bit too long, but it is still up on her channel. So you can check it out there. I will never give up fighting this deranged individual, but it will all happen offline. I swear you will never ever hear me mention this weirdo or anyone else ever again. No more rages from me. They are literally invisible to me now. I deeply regret not doing this sooner, believe me. So she is not going to be raging anymore. She's not going to be mentioning any reaction, drama, hate, channels, whatever you want to call it. It's all the same. Or is it? <laughs> I don't believe this for one second. I wouldn't be surprised if she's on tonight raging just a couple hours. She'll probably be raging before I even get this video up because that's how it goes. So now if you are a VIB and you are paying attention to the criticism that Chantal is receiving and you maybe want to pass that along to her, she is going to block you. Now, one thing when it comes to the VIBs, they do not have her best interest. A lot of them don't have her best interest in mind. And a lot of the VIBs will go in there and say things that are completely untrue because they are actually haters in disguise and they want to get her to rage. So they will go in there and say, you know, so-and-so reaction channel is saying this about you. They are saying that they are going to do this and it'll be completely made up. I've actually seen that for myself. I can't exactly remember what the VIB said, but they said something like Alex is shook is saying blah, blah, blah. And I didn't even say that. So this definitely happens a lot. Now, when it comes to FFG versus FB, I feel like this is kind of a a classic YouTube rivalry at this point. I don't think that it's ever going to come to an end, at least for now. I mean, it's not going to last forever, right? Or maybe it will. Maybe they'll be in the nursing home, like talking about each other. <laughs> Just picture that. But she's not going to stop talking about her and she's not going to stop talking about her. So so if Chantal didn't want so much criticism, maybe she should stop acting so horrendous. But then also she is in this position where if she doesn't rage, if she doesn't act horrendous, nobody really wants to watch. And the only person to blame is Foodie Beauty herself because she has cultivated this community. She has cultivated her brand being this person that rages, does gross things, and says gross things. If she were to get her life together, I don't think that many people would really watch her anymore. She doesn't have the staying power of Amberlynn Reed. She's the one that took her channel down this path of, you know, being this soap opera when it used to be just eating videos and she was doing pretty okay and it was a pretty stable income for her. It's not really like that anymore. She threw that all away so that she could put her entire life on the internet and that was the choice that she made. And this is just what comes with that. And after what we have seen for the past couple of years, I don't feel bad for her at all. All right, so just a quick rapid fire round where we are at in the foodie verse. During yesterday's live stream, there's a little bit more tea. She talked about how she was supposed to be taking hormone replacement therapy slash HRT, and that that is probably why all of her hair fell out or while she was going bald in the front. Because if you guys weren't around in 2019, or maybe it was 2020, it doesn't matter. She got a hysterectomy, and there are certain medications that you need to take after getting that done. Of course, I'm not an expert, so I don't know exactly about that kind of stuff. She talks about the open house. She says that she is just going to kind of allow people to come into her house. You know, someone who is scared for her safety, just allowing people to come in. It doesn't really make sense, does it? But she says that she is not going to be making any money. She's just going to give away all of this stuff for free. This is basically the easiest way out for her. I don't think that everything's going to be taken. It's not going to be as simple as she believes it might be. But then again, she'll probably just leave everything there anyway. She does give an update on Pete's. Supposedly, he is not going to be moving in with his mom because she lives in one bedroom. And that would end up being really cramped. He wouldn't have any privacy to... <laughs> 
You know what I mean? So maybe Pete's has found a room somewhere. You can like rent a room. He seems like the kind of person that would be awkward in a situation like that. Basically, you share a kitchen, bathroom, those kinds of things. But then you have your own bedroom. Think college. She also talks about getting Pete's a moving van. I guess she might actually help him. I don't know. I I still wouldn't count on that Pete's. For the rest of her stay in Canada before she goes to Kuwait, she's probably going to be staying in a hotel because as we said, she's leaving the villa earlier than expected and she's going to get a crappy hotel like the Motel Adam that she stayed in with Natter instead of staying at her mom's because she's scared that people know where she is because of this whole situation with her mom's address being put out there, right? Which, mind you, that's her fault. So she only cares that people know where she is and not where her mom is. Okay, so just a little last minute drama. I did see earlier today that Allah should be attempted to go live about three or four times. He was on there at one point with Murad. I tried to tune in for a little bit, but they were speaking in Arabic and I couldn't understand anything that was going on. He was also having some technical difficulties. I did see some people throwing tomatoes in the chat. It seemed like people were a little bit annoyed with this situation because of the notifications and nothing was really happening. He's still figuring out how to use his live stream, I guess. But I did notice a small clip uploaded by Funkel Fester, so I thought I would talk about at least that with you guys. During this clip, Allah Shabib insinuates that the company, like, I guess he is still friends with Murad, so he would have a reason to kind of protect their business and not admit if there was something shady going on. But he does say that Chantal has nothing to do with the business. At least that's what I got out of the clip. I will leave the full clip linked down below with some other sources as well. But also, Allah Shabib, somebody in the side chat asks if Chantal, like, why did she give Salah $9,000? And Allah seems a little apprehensive to talk about that question, but he just says, why don't you ask her and Salah why she gave him the $9,000? And then he follows that up by saying that it was to stay with her. So Allah certainly did not deny the $9,000. Allah made sure to mention that the money that Chantal gave to Salah was not for the company. He was very adamant about that, but he alluded to maybe she gave him money personally, right? So Allah certainly did not deny the $9,000 gift. Um, I believe it. But he doesn't know all of their business. And he says that they're moving on whether she stays with him or not. I'm not sure what the point of this live stream is, but it just came out and we're going to need to take some time to see exactly what they were saying because there was a lot of Arabic. But I am hearing some early rumblings that they are trying to silence Shabib. He's also talking to Murad. So maybe they convinced him to back off a little bit, but that's still just early speculation rumblings. (laughs) All right, guys, for the rest of the video, I'm going to do like a quickie recap on Amber's new video. The beginning of this video was super boring. This is why I had decided not to do a reaction. She talks about Legos and gives book recommendations. You guys know how much I love her book recommendations. So that is why we were just doing a quickie review. She thought about not weighing in because it was just not positive in the comment section. So Amberlynn is just no longer doing the weekly weigh-ins. She was supposed to weigh in several days ago. Honestly, I don't even understand what the schedule is at this point. I think it's just whenever she wants to do it, she's going to do it. That's what she says. So she will weigh in tentatively whenever. It's just too overwhelming, guys. I know what you're thinking. So she weighs in. Last Sunday, she weighed in at 505.2. Today, she is weighing in at 503.0. And she is down in total 20 LBs since starting the WLS process, in case you guys weren't paying attention. Because I wasn't either. She's having anxiety about scheduling appointments, but she is pushing herself through it. And she acknowledges that she is now 32 years old. So these are some things, some behaviors. She just kind of has to get over it and learn to advocate for herself and do things for herself because nobody else is going to do it for her. And I liked this from Amber. It is very true. I know like adulting is hard. Adulting sucks. But there comes a point where you do kind of just have to do these things and nobody's going to help you with it. You just have to do it. And even if anxiety presents itself, you just have to push through it. And that's where Amber is at with this WLS. (sighs) 
So Amber goes into detail of all the things that she has done in order to prepare for this WLS, and it is an extensive list. She says to stop saying that it was a seminar because it was not a seminar. And some people think that Amber just went to like a seminar with a bunch of people and that's all. But she goes into detail of the many things and creates a checklist. I kind of like this because I feel like when I get overwhelmed, I will make a checklist or a to-do list on your iPhone. And then you can kind of go through the things that you need to get done one by one. And it just feels a little bit less overwhelming and you can check off the tasks that you complete. So I totally recommend that if you get like overwhelmed or anxiety over personal responsibilities. I believe she says in the video that she is recommended for this surgery. Her doctor, she said, approved her in their own way. So you guys know how Amber speaks. She does say that she passed the psych evaluation. I do wonder how honest she was during that psych evaluation. And she is doing some low impact exercising, like walking, the things that people have been telling her to do for years, right? So Amber has completed the checklist for her WLS goal, and now it is just a bit of a waiting game when she can get in with the surgeon. And she knows the surgery that she is going to be doing because there are different types of WLS surgeries. I'm sure that some of you guys have went through one of these surgeries. I do know there's like a sleeve, there's all sorts of stuff, bypass. But Amber is not disclosing the particular surgery as of right now because she doesn't want people in the comment section to talk her out of it. So she is just listening to her surgeon and I can't really fault her for that. But there are all these little things, these little rules that you have to follow after you get the WLS surgery. And I think this is where people are a little bit concerned for Amber because she is going to have to keep her portions very small. Even when it comes to liquids, she's going to have to take like smaller sips, not drink with her meals. Definitely no Uber Eats portions or takeout portions because that will be way too much. So I think it will be really interesting to see if she does end up going through with this surgery, how she copes with these rules and these smaller portions and stuff, because if she doesn't, things could go really bad. And I know that based on what we have seen from Amber over the years, a lot of people have lost faith in her and this situation, it does seem a little bit alarming for her because she has never been able to follow any of these diet weight loss plans that she has done in the past. And I do think it is different when it is not necessarily life or death, but it is like life threatening if she were to just order Uber Eats and binge it, you know, she would probably be like hospitalized if something like that happened. So a lot of the end of the video is more so rambling, but she seems optimistic for the future. And I feel like this is the closest that we have ever gotten to a solution for Amber. I don't know. What do you guys think? Is she going to get this WLS? It's, it's like it's within grasp. She's almost there, but she hasn't taken the plunge. I mean, even in the video, she says that it's possible that they couldn't do the surgery because of her fatty liver. I don't know much about that. That's just what she said. I do hope that Amber is able to get this surgery and we can go ahead and join her on this journey. Could this be, you know, the thing that works for Amber? I think that this could be such a good tool for her. She's tried so many different things and none of them have worked over several, several years but I just hope that she doesn't get all the way there and then end up kind of going back to her old ways. Because if we do look to the past, she has done a lot of these different diet plans and she just never followed through. If she would have stuck to Weight Watchers for years on end, the weight would have fallen off. If she did Jenny Craig for years on end, even if she did Octavia, like it would work, even though it's not like the healthiest thing, it's garbage. But you would lose weight if you followed what they said. Will Amber follow what the surgeon says and commit to this entire lifestyle change? With the tools of the surgery, the stakes are much higher. She's not just going to gain weight. She could possibly really mess with her body if she doesn't follow the rules. And what do you guys think? If Amberlynn does go ahead and get this surgery and she loses a ton of weight, how do you think that she is going to behave? Do you think that her behavior will be worse? Do you think that she will be... Like, do you think that will change the way that she acts? Do you think that it'll change like her personality? It will be so interesting to see her have to restrict so much. And if she hasn't dealt with her binging, that could go very wrong. All right, you guys. So that'll be it for our Amber Lynn segment. Let me know what you guys think.
All right, you guys, thank you for watching today's video. Make sure you leave a like on it if you got this far and you would like to see more videos like this. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Subscribe, all that good stuff. We only need about 500 more subscribers to get to 50K. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Like, should I do something special? Let me know. I don't, I just, I don't know. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think and I will, of course, catch you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.